How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Dark Souls yet again, where we take a revisit to one of the first videos that really blew up on my channel. You know, a few months ago I posted a video titled, How Many Dark Souls Bosses Can You One-Shot in New Game Plus 6? And looking back at it, some of the editing, voiceover work, and various other portions of the video were not nearly as high quality as I feel I can make them nowadays. In addition to that, I only showed a handful of bosses, mostly early game bosses, that could be one shot, and I didn't really tackle anything past Anerlando outside of the Bed of Chaos. So today we're here to revisit that and answer the question, how many bosses can you actually one shot in Dark Souls in New Game Plus 6? Let's get into it. Our first victim of the run is once again the Asylum Demon. We were able to one-shot the Asylum Demon in that original video, and coming back, obviously, we're able to do the same, this time with the Black Knight Great Axe. I once again went with a melee armament here, as I know that magic is going to have a big-time role in some of the late-game bosses, so I figured I wanted to vary it up a little bit, especially starting off early against an easy boss like the Asylum Demon. Continuing on a very similar path to the one I took in my first go-around in Dark Souls. We find ourselves squaring off against the Taurus Demon, who was once again an enemy that we were able to one-shot last time as well. We're using another different weapon, this time the Black Knight Greatsword, as it, like all Black Knight weapons, have a 20% damage boost whenever you're facing off against demons, Taurus Demon included. For the Bell Gargoyles, I tried a couple of different methods with various sorceries as well as Sunlight Spear, but just to give you a taste of what's yet to come, I decided to break out Dark Bead early so that you can see some of the absolute devastation that this spell can do, especially when you're rocking high levels of both strength and intelligence like we are. And here we face off against the first boss in the game that I declared un-one-shottable in my original go-around in the Moonlight Butterfly. This one not too difficult, we just gotta run around, dodge some magic here and there, and after a long time it'll eventually float down, and we just need a couple of the fire pillars from Fire Tempest to hit. You know, in a bit of an ironic twist, when we're facing off against the Capra Demon again, I accidentally hit him with one of my swings to kill the dog. First time I did this, I recognized it. This time, I honestly had no idea until I'm watching this footage back as I'm doing some of the voiceovers. Clearly, we do more than enough damage to one-shot him, but it's just kind of funny that I made the, the mistake in that first time, and now the mistake in the second go-around as well. But as George Lucas once said, it's like poetry, it rhymes, so I figured, you know what, we're just going to keep this in, because it's pretty clear that we're going to be able to one-shot the Capra Demon with a variety of different methods. For Pinwheel, I decided to get a little bit cheeky. I'm using Ricard's Rapier, which was the weapon that was featured in one of my last videos that I put out. Be sure to check that one out. It is beating Dark Souls with optimized DPS. It shows why this weapon is one of the elites in the entire game. But what we gotta do is we gotta miss with the first R2 and then hit Pinwheel with the second Flurry, which does more than enough damage to one shot what many people consider to be the easiest boss in the entire game. Continuing on, now we face off against one of the bosses that I didn't even show in my last go-around in the Gaping Dragon. You may or may not know, but the Gaping Dragon actually has a weak spot on its little head tendril thing that it's got going on. And coming in here with Dark Bead, we, for the first time in the run, clear 10,000 damage with a single cast. I'm pretty sure that we also got some instability damage, which adds an extra 30% damage whenever an enemy is in a dodging or they finish their attack animation. And trust me, that's going to be important coming up very soon. For Quayleg, I did try to get a plunging attack using the high point in her arena and some Black Knight weapons, but was unable to do so, uh, you know, having to time up both that and the Dragon Torso Stone roar. So I just eventually went back to Dark Bead, and I'm not going to complain in this case because, you know, variety is the spice of life, but if I can get a one-shot, I can get a one-shot, and that's all that this video is about.
Big shout out to Meaty Jesus, even though he's probably got like, I don't know, 25, 50, 100 times more subscribers than I do. But I learned this one shot from him in his video that he did as part of the backlogs contest. What you have to do against Ceaseless to do this one shot is you have to bait the jump attack, sprint back towards the altar where you pick up the clothes at the start. Run and jump on top of the ledge here, and then run and jump and get a little bit higher. And turn and look kind of at what I would call his elbow, I guess. And once again, run and jump, and you have to do four ticks of damage with your falling animation. And if you're using a big weapon, you might be able to do it with a small weapon, but I find it was easier to do with a big weapon. You can do a plunging attack, which will do two ticks of damage. And because Ceaseless Discharge needs 6 total hits to fall whenever he's in this state, that is enough for the one-shot. Up next we have the Iron Golem, and this is definitely one of the more nebulous one-shots in this run. You could probably debate whether or not using a continuous cast of Fire Surge is a true one-shot. So whenever I do a tally at the end, I am going to go through and just tally up everything that we are able to one-shot, and then I'll also do a separate count where I had to use Fire Surge to kill the enemies. But because we're able to pick up extra castings, because we're in a higher level of New Game Plus cycle, we're able to easily clear the Iron Golem with plenty of Fire Surge casts to spare. You might be able to do this by knocking him down with one big hit, maybe like a, a Rapier hit or something like that, where he falls off the edge, but I figured this was going to be the easiest path of least resistance. Ah, uh, here we are in Anderlando facing off against the dynamic duo Hornstein and Smo. The first go around I tried to one shot Ornstein and then second phase Smo. I was able to get Ornstein down no problem, but we do just over 7500 damage to Smo. After running around in the fight in a couple of different tries I realized that Smo has an animation where he jumps back after he does an attack, or maybe if you're running up to him after you do an attack. And remember before I mentioned that there is a thing called instability damage which again gives you I think it's a 30% damage increase whenever an enemy is in a dodging animation or perhaps after they've missed one of their attacks. And seeing those numbers in that first try I knew that if I got right RNG I was going to be able to do it. And I gotta tell you out of all the one shots I did in this entire run this, this is probably the one that I'm most proud of, considering I can't find anywhere else on YouTube or any videos of anybody doing a true one-shot of ONS in New Game Plus 6. Also, I'm just throwing this in at the end, I, I had a, an attempt where I died to something off-screen or something, I have no idea what killed me in this. If anybody, if anybody knows, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments, because I would like to know what killed me on this, this attempt. For the Stray Demon, we once again have to resort to using Fire Surge. I didn't really mention this in the Iron Golem fight, but for that fight, this fight, and anything upcoming where I'm using Fire Surge as the one-shot method, just know that it was kind of my last resort option as I was just not able to make any other methods. Fire Tempest, Dark Beat, uh, the Dragon King Great Axe, R2 with its crazy high damage output. So I ultimately had to go back to one of the more overlooked pyromancies in the entire game. It, it is kind of funny though, just, just watching the damage tick up on the Stray Demon in this fight. Obviously I'm in hyper mode with a bunch of other buffs, but this thing can do some serious damage when you have it set up correctly. Now Sif tends to jump around a lot, and I actually thought this was going to be another boss fight where I had to make use of instability damage. So I tried a ton of times with Dark Bead, but I eventually switched back to Fire Tempest after thinking about it for a little bit. And in this fight specifically, we get very lucky that I think it's either the first or second Fire Pillar from Fire Tempest hits, and the last. The last, of course, dealing the remaining HP that Sif has. For whatever it's worth, if you're going to try some of these at home, the enemies like Sif that do a ton of jumping around and have a kind of a narrow hitbox, using Fire Tempest for the one shot is a little bit tedious and sometimes annoying given how inconsistent it can be sometimes. So more than halfway through the run, we finally hit a roadblock. It is our first boss that we cannot one-shot in Gravelord Nito. Nito by himself is maybe not the most difficult boss if you've ever actually done a randomizer and you get him without any of his skeletons. He's actually a super trivial boss as he's super slow. But the problem here is the skeletons in the arena. And the fact that he has some attacks that knock you down even if you're rocking a ton of poise. I tried this with two methods. The Dark Bead attempt was a lot closer, and really if you just do two casts you could kill Nito, you know, super quickly. 
Obviously not the point of this run, but just something to point out. And then I went back and tried with Fire Tempest, and even though in my attempt I only hit one, it doesn't even do 2,000 damage, which is about three pips of his HP bar, which isn't even close to a third of his health. As far as I can tell, Nido doesn't have a instability animation, and trying to get him with Fire Surge just was not happening either. So, our 14th boss of the run, or 15th if you count Orn Seen and Smoke as two, is the first one we can't one-shot. From one of the Lord Soul holders to another in Seath the Scaleless, again, we have to resort to the Fire Surge Pyromancy, as Seath already has a pretty colossal HP pool in regular new game, and with all of the boosts in HP and defense that these bosses get, especially towards the back half of the game, it's just not realistic that anything is going to be able to come close to one-shotting him. Without Fire Surge, of course. Real key here is you kind of got to stick close to his hip, I guess is what you would call it. Hope that he doesn't do any attacks where he slams his tendrils on the ground, and you just stick in there, cast, cast, cast away. And this is one of the fights where I just kind of let Fire Surge go on and on just to see how much extra damage you could do after Seath is actually done. Nearly 25k in Dark Souls 1, ain't too bad. Given that the Demon Fire Sage is just a reskin of the Asylum Demon and Stray Demon, but with more HP and more defense, it should come at no surprise that we have to once again go back to Fire Surge for the Demon Fire Sage. The Centipede Demon is mostly annoying in this run specifically because he likes to take a long time to walk over to you on this little island, and because you don't have the orange shard ring once you start a New Game Plus cycle, You've kind of got to wait for him to walk over, and this is one where you just kind of watch your HP to make sure you don't die too power within. Of course I'm rocking the Sanctus so we get a little bit of HP regen still. It's a, it's a long drawn out fight that ends rather unceremoniously. Honestly I thought this was going to be a boss that I was not going to be able to one shot, but I am glad that I did. For Gwendolyn, I was, I was fully prepared to do the full 10 minutes or so that you need to run down the hallway until it gets to the end. But then I remembered that for whatever reason, despite being a sorcery based boss, Gwendolyn actually has relatively low magic defense, especially in comparison to even some of the DLC bosses. So I just went back to Dark Beat as again I didn't want to subject myself to that long drawn out fight. I think you could probably do this with Fire Tempest, but uh, I think you would have to do the entire length of the hallway just because of how narrow Gwendolyn's hitbox is. Remember just a few minutes ago when I was in the Sif fight talking about how it's kind of annoying to face off against enemies that like to hop around a lot and have kind of narrow hitboxes? Well, no better time than to hop into the DLC and square off against the Sanctuary Guardian who does just that. First time I tried this one, I got two hits and the Sanctuary Guardian was left with just a sliver of HP. So again, I knew that we had to get some good RNG, we had to get all three pillars of Fire Tempest to hit, and luckily in this run I, I kind of got him shoved up close to the wall, which I think kind of messes with its AI a little bit, and makes this one shot a whole lot easier and actually doable, which uh, was a bit of a surprise to me if, if I'm being honest. After I killed the Sanctuary Guardian, I realized that I still had one more non-DLC boss to go, outside of Gwyn of course. And that was Priscilla. For whatever reason, I thought that uh, trying to one-shot Priscilla when she was in her invisibility phase would softlock the game. Uh, that, that clearly is not the case because I was able to cast Dark Bead and she goes down right away. And I was able to leave the Painted World with no issue. So maybe that just stems from whenever you initially go in the fight with her and she is not aggroed. I, I think maybe one-shotting her out of that phase might softlock the game. Either way. We just got the big hitters left. Let's see if we can one-shot any one of them. And unfortunately, Artorius is a no-go. I am able to hit two Fire Tempest pillars against him, but they do not do quite enough to say that hitting a third would be able to one-shot him. I think we would need some instability damage, and as best I could tell, he never does that roll away, where he'll go to self-buff until he's actually taken some damage. So we cannot one-shot him. You know, it's kind of the same thing for Calamite. I was actually in this attempt that I'm showing on screen only able to hit one of the Fire Tempest pillars, but it is obviously pretty clear that there is just no way at all that we're going to be able to one-shot Calamite. 
man, that kind of holds true for Manus as well. Again, he's just got way too much HP, way too high of resistances, particularly elemental resistances. I even tried doing this with a Fire Surge, and I just don't think there's any way possible. Even if you're rocking full Havels and at just like infinite poise, I, I just don't, don't see any way that this would be possible. This one I kind of knew going in as, again, I watched a lot of the Backlogs Contest one-shot videos a couple of months ago. And for the people that actually were able to one-shot Manus, they will tell you that it was a nightmare in and of itself. As again, in just regular default new game, you actually need that instability damage that I talked about before in order to one-shot it. Finally, we have Gwyn, and I, I gotta tell you, I was really, really trying to find a weapon that was going to be able to one-shot him with a parry and repost. I looked up a bunch of different weapon ARs, a bunch of different motion values for Hornet critical hits, but uh, as, as best that I can tell, it's just not possible to one-shot him with a repost in New Game Plus 6. So we have to go back to Darkbeed, and actually to my surprise, this was a one-shot. I honestly didn't think that we were going to be able to do this coming in. You know, honestly, this was a lot of fun to kind of revisit after having gained so much more knowledge about the game, even in just those four short months that uh, since I recorded that original video. I also hope that some of the recording quality and some of my voiceover quality is a little bit better compared to that one. And obviously the results in this one are a lot more true to what you can actually do in the highest new game plus cycle. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to see other games that I've tackled, I have a bunch of these one shots on my channel, including this one, Dark Souls 2, 3, Demon Souls, and all of Elden Ring. I would like to do Bloodborne at some point, but I have got to buy that one with the DLC before I can actually go through and try some of this out in that one. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed again. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, a comment, or a subscription. Thank you for all the support recently, and we'll see you in the next video.